from preventing the revolution now protest to getting more protests. Nigerians are definitely not taking the refusal by the Department of State Services to release Omoyoli Shore lightly. And a lot of haunted houses claiming to be rehabilitation centers. Well, we will be discussing on the clampdown on these illegal centers. This is Plus Politics, and I am Mary Anna Cohn. In the 21st century, people uh, and in fact thousands of people with mental health conditions across Nigeria are still being chained and locked up in various facilities where they face terrible abuse. Now, this was made known by the Human Rights Watch. Also, detention, chaining and violent treatment are pervasive in these facilities and, and, and other places such as state hospitals. I'm sure you're shocked at that. Rehabilitation centers, traditional healing centers and even faith-based facilities. Now, President Muhammad Buhari said in October, uh, in October 2019 that, that he would not tolerate the existence of torture chambers and physical abuses of inmates in the name of rehabilitation. But again, the president has failed to acknowledge some government-run facilities who have also been accused of these anti-human treatments. Well, joining us in the studio is Shegun Shopitan. He's of the ACT Network and is also a political analyst. It's good to have you join us. I hope we're going to act on this one. <laughs> anyway, um, first things first. It's shocking to hear that this is not happening in Afghanistan. With due respect to Afghanistan and what they're facing, this is not happening in some terrorist stronghold. This is happening right under our noses. And governments have come and gone. And we're all, every day we're saying, well, we, we're putting our signature, pending it to whatever the UN is you know, pushing. And we're standing by it. But these acts of immorality and dehumanization is happening right at our doorsteps. I mean, I'm wondering, how did we let this slip past us? Well, I mean, um, we, 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 we exist as Nigerians in a conflicted society. Um, Nigeria is, is badly broken. Um, the Nigerian state and the Nigerian people, unfortunately. Um, so, um, we, we've, our, our sense of right and wrong is grossly twisted. Um, and, and I say this with all due respect to everybody, but this cuts right across um, all levels of society, whether you're talking of amongst the affluent or the, the poorest of the poor. People just can't seem to tell what's right and what's wrong anymore. Right, um, and, I, and, I and I'm wondering what could have blurred those lines of right and wrong because they're supposed to be as visible as and, and easy to understand as white. possible. Yes, <laughs> um, I, I think it's um, I, I think it's decades and decades of abuse and dehumanization. Um, majority of Nigerians, to be honest, have been badly dehumanized. Um, we don't necessarily see ourselves as human beings. Um, we don't respect the rights of others. We don't respect life itself. So in a country, so we're talking of detention centers right now, but just cast your mind back. Um, while you were away, I, there, was, there was this incident um, of a lady that was uh, dropped off somewhere in Aja, stark naked, emaciated, Obviously, I think eventually it turned out that she was an HIV victim, and, so, and it was a car that dropped her there. When she was dropped off, a crowd gathered around her. Nobody made to cover her up. Nobody made to help her. They were taking pictures and posting on social media for hours until an ordinary Nigerian, one wonderful lady, you know, sort of came up and was like, what is all this? And then covered her up and took her up, paid for her hospital bills and all that. But a large crowd gathered around this woman and took advantage of her situation. That's the society we live in now. 
So, you know, so if you talk about the detention centers, um, it's not new. <laughs> it's I, been around for quite a while. I know we have while. clips and pictures of some of the victims. Uh, and we're going to start rolling those yeah. pictures now. I see some of them really emaciated. Yeah. Some of them, their legs have been tied up for yeah. so long that it's the, swollen. The swollen, it, it, injured. <laughs> Let's start with these people who say that... Um, they are trying to get people to feel better. So you go to a place and you are someone somewhat sick and in a bid to get help, you find yourself being brutalized or battered. I'm wondering, those government detention centers that Mr. President is not aware of or maybe now is aware of, what is the legal backing of those detention centers? What exactly is the practice? Is it non-orthodox? Is it what exactly is it? Are we going back to the days of Hitler where we had <laughs> concentration camps? I'm trying to understand yeah. this. It's a good thing you bring that up because um, when I saw the story, I uh, I have some personal experience with that, and I know that as far as the government detention, they're not detention centers, rehabilitation centers are, is concerned. Um, this is not necessarily um, a bad thing because most of them are psychiatric homes. And we do know that all over the world, you know, there are certain types of psychiatric um, um, cases that you must restrain. You need to restrain them so they don't hurt themselves or others. Mm -hmm. um, you know, somebody that is completely lunatic and violent, you have to restrain them. So. Um, uh, within that context, yes, maybe. Now, the type of restraint is a completely different question because if you say someone is a psychiatric patient that you're treating, administering drugs and rehabilitation to, and then you chain them with shackles, um, iron shackles, rather than comfortable, padded, um, you know, restraints. Mm -hmm. Now, that's abuse. So. I, I, I've heard that what they actually use in some of those government you know, um, centers are not very comfortable um, and damaging to the health of the individuals involved. You know, so, but, but, but it has to be said that some of those places um, do um, have legal backing because they are proper hospitals taking care of mental cases or drug re rehabilitation centers. So if we're to deal with that, we need to talk about the conditions. Under it's which the conditions we're looking yeah, at. Yeah. I know of the neuropsychiatric hospitals yeah. that we have across the nation. Mm -hmm. um, but I'm still wondering, because there are trained doctors, yeah. at what point would a doctor say it's okay to beat up, to mm. malhandle, mm. A patient who you know is not okay, is mentally challenged. At what point does your medical practice allow for a person to be chained? You're trying to make a person feel better. Yes, there might be those who need to be restrained, but how do you help a men mentally ill person to get better if you're also acting crazy? I mean, sure. I mean, you absolutely, if, if, if it comes to light that any of those medical facilities where people are restrained and detained um, actually meet out physical abuse on those people, then they've got to be taken up and probably, you know, some sort of legal action taken against them because I don't believe that they have that right. There's no treatment regime anywhere that involves battering and beating people up. So I'll be very shocked to find if that is happening in a government centre. Where that happens is this other, and I really think that that is what we're talking about now. So when the Human Rights Watch, majority, the, the bulk of their report actually focuses on those illegal um, places, you know, they, I don't want to even call them centers, where, you know, whether it's for religious reasons, I saw one in Kano. We're going to get to that. Yeah. We're going to get to that because yeah. I have heard, not seen, mm -hmm. I'm not going to report something that I've not seen, mm -hmm. but I've heard many times that people get flogged and tied in some religious places yeah. because they're trying to... Convert. Yes, send out the demon of, yeah. you know, whatever it is. Yeah. <laughs> and then we know that this borders around human rights. Mm -hmm. let, let, let's, let's look at what Human Rights Watch said because mm -hmm. they, <laughs> there's a lot of things. They said that... Um, 
People with mental health conditions should be supported and provided with effective services in their communities instead of being restrained and abused. Um, they also went ahead to say that Nigeria, uh, there are seven, seven places in Nigeria um, who have subjected some of these people to unimaginable hardship and abuse. This is the word abuse where you were talking about. Yeah. So it is there. Mm -hmm. These people are being abused. Now, who gives a church or religious place the license to deal with mental health patients? Mm -hmm. Because you have to, it's like where you have traditional birth attendants, they are trained and certified to do what they do. Yeah. Are these places given the license to do that? If not, why are they still growing? Why is it happening? Do we even have to wait for a human rights watch to unearth these things? Um, it's, it's, it's really, really sad. Because we and see it happening every day. It happens. I mean, it's all over the place. And like I said before, it's not new. You know, this is, it's almost a culture and a tradition. Some of these places are traditional healing centers and heal, healing homes. And their, their, their methodology includes beating people up, chaining them, um, driving demons out and all of that nonsense. Um, I, I think it boils down to us. So it's a good thing that Human Rights Watch has come up with this report. It's a good thing that, you know, Plus TV is spotlighting this. And I think a lot of that needs, a lot more of that needs to happen. So that um, as a society, we need to start saying no and push government. You know, I, I always say that very few governments anywhere in the world will do the right thing just for the sake of it. Usually there would have to be some sort of pressure from the people, from the citizens. So I think we've gotten to a point where we need to push government to crack down on these things. I mean, some of them are but, just But how barric. many of us, and I'm, with due respect to every Nigerian who's yeah. watching, how many of us care about anybody else other than ourselves? Unless it is <laughs> Our, our close our relative, yeah. or it's close to home. How many of us would want to go out of our way? We'll just, you know, we already have stereotyped people with mental um, yeah. disabilities as mad people. So where is the sympathy to push against these kind of things? We have to. I mean, it's, um, it's one of the problems we have as a society. Um, I always say that to the average Nigerian, everything is okay if I am okay. That's, that's, that's our mentality, and that is not, it's one of the reasons that our society is so dysfunctional. Because societies that work, people care about what's happening to their neighbor, you know. So if, if you see, if you hear, see some sort of light in your neighbor's house in the middle of the night, and you feel it's unusual, somebody's going to pick up the phone and call the police. Here we don't do that. So, so we, we need to get outraged enough. They don't have to be our family members. The people that I saw you know, in those detention centers across the country. It's not just Kano. There was one in Ibadan just two weeks ago, you know. Um, they, I don't know them from Adam, but my, my heart was torn to shreds just thinking about the horrors that they had to endure because, and some of them were placed in those places by their family members who felt maybe they were demon-possessed or they were mad or they were drug addicts or whatever other reason that people give. For, 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 for this barbaric and terrible acts. So I'm saying that Nigerians need to say it's enough and demand of government to crack down. So the police, instead of the DSS pursuing Shawore, this is a case. Oh, here we go. <laughs> this is a case for the... It's, it's an internal security problem. You know, I mean, you know, just think about somebody who's been trapped somewhere for five years, um, denied of freedom, denied of good food, of healthy conditions, the day you release that guy, it's very, very likely it's going to be dysfunctional and it might, who knows what state of mind is going to come into sight. Talking with. about that, I watched a video online about the, you know, the expose of you know, these illegal detention centers. Yeah. And sadly, some of these people don't want to leave because they know nowhere else. Yeah. They're more comfortable there. Mm -hmm. Again, some of them are afraid of how society would treat them yeah. when they go back out there. So there's already a psychological Absolutely. damage that has mm -hmm. happened to them. Mm -hmm. So it's not enough, or maybe I should ask it as a question, is it enough for Mr. President to say, oh, I'm going to clamp down on these people, the full weight of the law? How about rehabilitating these people Absolutely. in in essence, I mean, are you going to do that in reality instead of just passing these sanctions? Yeah, I mean, so the president has this um, wonderful habit of 
preaching and sermonizing um, when what we should be seeing is action. So yeah, absolutely, it's a great thing he said that, but he needs to give the marching orders to his security forces to go to those places, tear them apart, release those people. But like you say, don't send them home because I think you'll probably be doing more harm than good because they're damaged goods with all you know, due respect to them. They need to be fixed. They need rehabilitation. So you probably need to take them, I would say, um, in partnership with international um, NGOs and agencies who have the expertise to deal with this because I have absolutely no confidence that if you take them, you want to rehabilitate them, you give them to the same government that is also holding some other people in shackles. <laughs> How do you rehabilitate them? So, so I think that the government needs to own up to its own where it doesn't have competence and partner with people that do and help these people regain some sort of normal, normal, normalcy in their, in their lives and in their relationship with society. And with all that you think, all that we think or know that government has on its plate, mm -hmm. do you think that this would be a priority any time? Absolutely soon? not. Um, I thought you were just being optimistic a few minutes ago. No, 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 no. <laughs> I was saying that we need to push, not that they will. You know, so I don't think this will ever be a priority. Um, the only way to make it a priority is to make them uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. The only way to make them uncomfortable is to make enough noise about it, strategic in the right places and in the right way, right? Okay. So um, some, some, at the end of the day, I'm, I'm not even sure. It's, not, it's more of a human rights thing, right? Not, not um, governance advocacy. This is human rights. People are being, people's rights are being torn to shreds and abused. So the human rights community needs to step up and step out and say no. Um, Human Rights Watch is not even a Nigerian, it's, it's an international, it's an international organization. organization. You know, so where are, where's the outrage? This is a question that I keep asking myself about Nigeria and Nigerian organizations and the Nigerian society. We just don't get outraged enough about anything anymore. So I'm not optimistic that government will do anything about this if there is no pressure from us, the citizens. That pressure needs to happen because this has to stop. I want to be very optimistic with you that Nigerians would pressure the government. But like you also said, you know, we have too many other things to worry about and we don't, we don't even prioritize the things that we're supposed to prioritize. So going forward, what should people know, especially family members of these people who genuinely sometimes take these people there for help and then they, they only to find out that these guys are in the wrong hands? What should people look out for, especially if you're trying to take your aged, you know, um, mother or father who's beginning to have some issues with you, or someone who really has mental health issues? There are a lot of depressed people out there, a lot of suicidal people out there. How do you help a suicidal person if you put them in chains? Um, there, there are two issues that, that, that would address the question that you raise. One is a more fundamental general issue. We have to step back and realize that as, um, as a country, we need more education. And I'm talking of formal education. The illiteracy level is... How is that supposed to help us? It, it's, it, the, the, the reason I say this is majority... I don't know about majority. I don't have the numbers. But a large number of the cases in those places were put there by their family members who knows what conditions they will be subjected to. They know. It's not, they're not, they're not, um, they're aware. They're aware that they're going to be put in chains. So you knowingly so, take your child who is going yes, to be... Yes, absolutely. And they abandon them there. They leave them there for years. So that, that's, 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 it's a problem of the mind. The mind of that person needs help. It needs to be reformed and changed. Right? So, so that's why I say it's an education thing. The illiteracy problem in Nigeria is at the bottom of a lot of our problems. Right? So government as a long-term fix, because I tell you what, this problem is not going away next year. Exactly. <laughs> it's not because going we're away. very quick to yeah. lift the cane, but do yeah. we use it at it's the end of the day and follow through to see if the discipline has taken place yeah. or not? And will these spaces be shut down for 
as long as they can. So I mean, the point is, even if you shut them down, if you shut these ones down... Um, Are they going to open rights, up shop, shop yeah, somewhere else? Human Rights Watch actually observed 28 of them across the country. And trust me, of course, there are thousands of them. If you shut down those thousands, a thousand more will spring up because they're coming from our culture and beliefs. So we need... Um, we, we need education. I mean, I, I can't find any other way around this. You need, you need to educate the, 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 the populace. Our literacy level is simply too high. So there's a lot of superstitious beliefs. I mean, even amongst the educated people. So what chance do we have I when shudder, you're not even I educated? Shudder, I shudder yeah. every time I think I mean, about it. How can you take somebody to a spiritual healer? Um, because say, for instance, that he's lazy. So first of all, you need to define lazy. And then you take that person, you say he needs help, you take him to a healer who says, oh, that laziness, there is a demon of laziness, right? And I need to cast that demon out. And it's not enough to pray over the guy. You now have to beat the demon out. I mean, come on, there's something is wrong with that. So we need education, that's one. And then government is not playing enough of a role in trying to... Um, um, direct the, the, the mindset of society, of the Nigerian society. So we have agencies of government who are charged with this constitutionally, but they're not doing anything. They do nothing. I keep talking about them. The National Orientation Agency, where are they? What are they doing? Uh, elections will come up soon. Yeah, and then you just see some random jingles and a few flyers here and there. I mean, they're, 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 I don't think that the Minister of I once of had them on this show and they said... <sighs> Um, it's when they release the monies and, and the timing, that, that's the problem. It's a part of the problem, and I think they're grossly underfunded. Um, the Minister of Information doesn't understand, obviously doesn't understand the importance of this agency, because if he did, you know, in the first term of uh, President Buhari, in fact, the first budget that they did, I was looking out for the budgetary allocation to that agency. I remember that uh, Alaji Lai Mohammed actually said on TV, that a huge chunk of their budget was going to go to that agency. So I was excited, and I was looking for that figure, and, you know, it Wasn't turned out to it? be a lie. Unfortunately. Well, let's hope that the things that we do in this country do not turn out to be a lie, because it will be really hurtful, <laughs> all the promises that have been made to us. Yeah. Well, Shegu Shopiso is a political analyst, and he's of the ACT Network. He's not going anywhere. We'll take a break, and when we come back, we'll talk about the protests for uh, Shoray's um, release. Yes, it happened in Abuja today, and of course, uh, we'll talk about it after the break. Stay with us. Mm -hmm.